didn't know that. Hey, what's up, flowers? Welcome, hey, welcome. there we go. I got it to work this time. To work <laughs> you can jump time. up on it. Wait, I didn't even invite you. You just like stormed on. Like, just imagine that for a second. Oh, I thought that was supposed to happen. No, nah, no, that's oh, great. No, bad. that's great. I that's I was great. Giving some secret VIP permission or something. My bad. <laughs> no, it's I love it. Captain Flower special. Yeah, I'll I take mean that. that works for me. Yeah, we're super, we're super excited to get this started. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun talking about just sort of the right ways to do casting and some of the tips and the tricks and the underlying things that people don't consciously think of while we're also casting your players that have been learning all this stuff in boot camp and they've been leveling up and working towards their own goals so it'll be a cool sort of reward for the people playing to be able to watch their own games get casted and then it'll also be a fun learning tool for everybody else watching it wanting to learn something about casting so i'm excited for it i think it's going to be great we got quite a bit of people in here we'll go in about a couple minutes we'll all drop down together uh to the dragon event and then we'll kick this thing off um what do you think is the best way you've probably done this stuff a lot flowers so you probably know yeah. a couple of technical tricks here what do you think is the best way to watch these games together and try to be like the closest to sync as possible what have you found so the way that you, you do it is but that's why i asked what server we were playing on because i have i have an na account and i also have a level three eu west account just for spectating yeah is we both need to hop in the lobby of the game being played so whichever one's first na or eu west and then yeah. we both need to be in spectator and just keep the game at the like we're not going to be doing a bunch of pausing and rewinding type stuff just Got because it. of the technical limitations of this so we're just going to keep it caught up to current speed, which will be, you know, live minus three minutes that's built into the client. And then just leave it on directed camera. The directed camera in League of Legends, for people who do not know, is, remember, not predictive. It is reactive. The server and all the information in the game is already known ahead of time because we're on a three minute delay. So the directed camera is not trying to predict what's going on. It's actually reacting to everything that happened, quote unquote, three minutes ago. So that's mm. why whenever you see the directed camera do things, and this is actually the first tip that I'll give you guys. If you're commentating as a like solo commentator, starting off, you're in the amateur scene, you're just sort of having the directed camera be your observer because you don't have an actual observer, either just like on your practice casts or even sometimes for the league that you're working with. If you see the directed camera go away from a player who's low HP and has an ignite on their head or something like that, they're not going to die you instantly know that they're not going to die without huh. having to wait to see if that last tick is going to work because the game is reacting, not predicting if they're going to die. It's reacting because it knows they didn't die because the game saw it three minutes ago. So, so how, how did you No, That's amazing tip. I, you know, I've been doing these for a little bit and I always was like skeptical about, like I was kind of hating on the directed cam. I was like, oh, this thing's probably mm -hmm. garbage. Like I didn't even, I didn't realize it was actually that good. So it like- will so yeah. obviously it's not as good as a as a living breathing like human person whose job is to actually observe and track all the most important things and react in live time to what the casters are talking about uh -huh. but in terms of it being functional in terms of it getting its job done yes it works it's actually pretty reliable in that regard it it's not going to miss out on action it's going to show you the kills and the most important thing is as a commentator you're never going to be required to also be an observer on a show on any broadcast worth its salt you're never going to be asked okay we need you to cast this game while also being an observer it's just too much to focus on so you don't want to build the habit of relying on yourself to also be an observer the entire time because then you're going to train your brain to be working on these multiple tracks that it doesn't need to work on and you're going to start filtering out useful information to make sure you're observing so mm. Which I is recommend... basically what I did last time. This is literally what I did. I was like, yeah. I was like micromanaging the camera and trying to talk. Yeah, yeah you don't want to do that because you're going to your brain's going to be interrupting itself. You're not going to have coherent thought processes. Your flow between subjects and topics isn't going to be as good as it otherwise would. Definitely just if you don't have a dedicated human observer, leave it on directed camera and just let it do its thing. Huh. OK. And with that. That's a good little. Uh, that's a good little uh, segue moment. I say we all just drop down to the captain of the Captain Flowers event room. We'll all drop down there, and then we will set this bad boy up to make sure that you guys can see it in the Discord as best we can, or you can go to fb.gg/niece. So let's just all drop down and do it up.
If you guys don't mind, I have a question specifically for Captain Flowers, if he's open to it. Yeah, sure. All we're doing is just waiting for the lobby to fill up. Anyway, I'm down. What do you got? Okay, so this is sort of a, a nerdy question, a uh, caster okay. nerd question. Do you do vocal exercises before casting? So I don't have like a dedicated set of vocal exercises that I do. No, some commentators on the pro scene have like a very specific set of stuff like tongue twisters and whatever that they go through. I know that Froskuren had a pretty dedicated regimen. Like Kobe has some steps that he goes through. I never really knew any vocal stuff. So like, you know, coming from shoveling dirt or whatever beforehand, it's not like I was in the world of broadcasting heavily before getting into DLCS. So for me, usually what I do is before a day of casting, I'm gonna make sure like that whole morning, I'm drinking plenty of water, nice and hydrated. That one, I know that like stay hydrated is a meme these days, but it's absolutely 100% necessary for casting. I'll make sure that I always have a cup of like hot honey water there right next to me as soon as I'm casting to help keep the throat like nice and relaxed. And then the other thing that I will do before I start is the, the thing that I used to do to measure how mechanically on point I was is I would do the fast part of Rap God. So that's what I do before <laughs> every cast starts is I'll just sit there and I'll go through that real quick to make sure that my enunciation's on point and my words are coming out fast enough. Well, can you do I'm it? I'm able to, to keep up. Um, we'll give it a shot having just woke up. Someone love a double number, you assume I'm a human. What I gotta do to get it to be you, I'm superhuman. Innovative and I'm in a world that's like anything you say, freaking shame off of me, I'm no good to you. I'm devastating, one never demonstrating. Had to give a motherfucking audience a feeling like a slave hating, never hating, and another haters off forever waiting for the day that they can say a hell of three celebrating. Cause another way to get them motivated, I make elevating music. You make elevator music. Oh, he's too mainstream. Well, that's what they do when they get jealous, they confuse it. It's not hip hop, it's pop. Cause I found a hell of a way to fuse it with rock, shock rap, with doc. Throw and lose yourself and make them lose it. I don't know how to make songs like that. I don't know what words to use. Let me know what it occurs to you. We did the fast part of rap god through and through. Like that. So wow. that was pretty clean. Spicy. I'm so clapping. I don't know how well it goes through on my mic, but yeah. So wait, you're not We're you're not there. officially with Riot anymore only. You're not exclusive no, to Riot I, anymore. I'm a freelancer. Exactly. So when like, I so... say something like League of Legends is the best game in the world with the worst client in the world, you don't yes, get like I honestly offended. can't believe that Riot's client still operates like a mobile game from 2010. <laughs> I don't understand that either. I, I actually think it's very important that I levy my own criticisms and call out things that need to be better because if the only thing that you ever say is incessant praise for something, people aren't going to take you seriously. That's if true. I say the client should be better, if I say I find some of the modern item design frustrating, then when I praise other things and say, I love the fact that they're constantly like trying to at least keep things fresh. And I really enjoy the fact that some of the, be the more recent champ designs have been really cool to me. Like Vex, I love Vex's design. Vex was good. Yeah. When I say stuff like that, it has more weight because I people know that I'm not just constantly praising everything because, oh, he casts for Riot. I yeah. think it's super important to be honest about what you don't like and what you do like. Okay, so yeah. since we're into the lobby, let's go ahead, like champ select, obviously part of the game. It's one of the things that you're gonna be casting too. So at the most baseline level, casting champion select is making sure that players are aware of the champions being drafted onto each team. Obviously that is the most important thing. It's the foundation of the house that we're building here and how those work together coherently. So as the play-by-play, -play, my job during champ select is going to, okay, looks like they missed a ban here <laughs> for the first one on the blue side. So we're starting off great. My yep. job is going to be a lot of just very basic letting people know what's happening. Like normally the ban phase would be going through more quickly than this in most like professional games or whatever, right? Like usually teams are going to have ban phase one pretty well planned out. They're not gonna spend 30 seconds on each ban. Mm. So we would just start off, you know, we would be having our intro. I'd be saying, I'm Captain Flowers. I'm joined by Niche today at the boot camp, and we're jumping into game number one here of caster training, where we're gonna be taking a look at what some of the brightest young stars on the European West server have to offer. That is whenever they're not currently behavior banned. Now. As we get into the game, we're gonna see, and then I would list off. So we've got Irelia ban, Senna ban, Draven ban, Malphite banned away. And then like, as we're talking about the bans, if we were still waiting for some of those to come in, you might suggest a couple things that you've been seeing banned out a lot lately in the meta. Maybe a couple things that have really been target priorities for people to pick during boot camp. 
and then just sort of describing your expectations for things waiting on this first pick to happen. The big important thing to remember here is that draft is actually really nice to us as commentators because we have that big clock just ticking down in the middle of the screen, letting us know the maximum amount of time until our talking points are gonna change because they have to lock in a pick as soon as that clock hits zero, which is gonna change the conversation. So boom, first pick of the draft gonna be Trindamir over there yeah, for blue side. Yeah, it's, it, it looks like it's in my honor almost, you know, there's a yeah. lot of uh, Trindamir your fans of the boot camp because they know it's one of the mains and wow that's a that's a pretty rough counter pick if that's what's coming out in response so okay so i like the fact that you only said the one sentence about it because this is one of the big things that a lot of amateur commentators will fall into as a trap is they'll see the Trendomir picked up there and then while sets getting hovered they would sit there and talk about like and oh yeah if you see mess Ma Masterimus try to go for this set here. The set is such a good counter pick and yada, yada, yada. And they'll go into the set and they'll go into the set and then he's going to pick Cho'Gath or something like that, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. So generally the rule that I like to tell people is if you're going to mention a hover pick at all, mention it in one quick sentence and then broaden the conversation a little. So if you're saying, if you're seeing Trindamir and then you're seeing a set hover and you're saying, you know, set would be a great counter here, then you can sort of just describe what about set as a champion makes him a good counter as opposed to talking about set specifically. So if you're just talking about, you know, powerful, a powerful melee unit that's able to stand and fight against Trindamir and stat check him a little bit, beat him in his own stat check game, that can then roll forward to if they pick a different champion that fulfills a similar role, then you can also lead that point in with the thing about set like you were talking about, right? So if they switch it to another champion that's similar to do the same job of shutting down Trendemir, then you can be like, boom, also this great choice here. He'll be able to answer that Trendemir pretty well. Okay, so Misfortune banned away. That one's pretty normal to me. Yumi's pretty normal to me. The Cassidy ban is a little Monka W. That makes me feel like there's gotta be somebody over on the blue team that they they OP.GG'd him and they saw that he's a Cassidy player or something because otherwise I don't feel that this champion often warrants any sort of a ban. Lissandra, the last one. Okay, yeah, so and now. That would be that would be a a very bizarre Cassidy uh cast in ban especially considering that you've got this you've got this uh remaining composition it's only one option for cast in here that's left yeah yeah there's uh there's not a lot there's not a lot so we've got our so over here on the red side we've got i'm not 100 percent sure because they got a they got a little bit of flex pick ability here so what, whatever we're gonna see is their last one we still have to sort of wait and see here so we'll we'll have ezreal into the vein as our bottom lane matchup here for the ad carries zyra most likely expected to be on support oh never mind jinx locked in at Zerath, the final pick so it's looking like trinomir top talent in the jungle Zerath mid and then jinx and zyra bottom what will be the final pick of the draft here to settle things looks like the There's support's the gonna be the choice how are we feeling about the thrash here, Nish? I think I think it's pretty good. I mean, a pick a pick option here in such a squishy composition. Any of the thresh hooks land, it's going to be very very bad for blue. They're not going to really like being locked down into Malzahar heavy CC into the set. They've got a really good pick comp actually when you read into it, and and then Fiddle can always lay in the weeds and follow that up real nicely. So yeah, it's not a bad exit. It's not a bad exit pick here. By the way, I don't know if you did that on purpose, but very good job. Oh, because thanks. I set I set you up for a uh, a bit of an XD question because I asked you what you think about the thresh while the thresh was still being hovered, and you said you like it here, and then immediately didn't talk about thresh specifically, but said pick options in a comp like this versus champions that are all off and squishy. That is exactly exactly what I wanted you to do based on what I said before about talk about the archetype of the hover as opposed to the direct explanation of the hover so that even if he switched over to something else he goes for a pike he goes for a blitz crank whatever all your points are still relevant good job oh uh, so it's it's more about it's more about defending it's more about defending your your positions in advance in case well, it doesn't line up, right? Like it's almost like giving well, yourself an out. I don't want you to take it uh, take it defensively because it's it's not really defensive as much as it is covering the right bases. Think of it like this. It's just like you you can't over index on this one super specific thing because no commentator is 
a like a seer like a, a, a psychic right like somebody's <laughs> always going to switch up at the very end and if you spend 30 seconds talking about something that ends up not happening it doesn't matter how accurate the information you said was you could have wikipedia like league wiki knowledge of whatever champion you're talking about and tell me exactly what his cooldowns are and the flat damages with the ratio at level three of the skill and if he doesn't get picked it's worthless right it still comes off as why were you talking about that so that's why you just want to make sure to have the conversation be applicable even if the champion doesn't get locked in that's the main thing is make sure that you have a pivot don't be defensive but make sure that you have a pivot got it so flowers i have to ask you have extensive extensive 5v5 knowledge extensive casting experience how are yes. we feeling about this game? Who are you? Who would you put all your chips on right now? We're at the casino. Red team You've easy. got a big stack. Red team easy. Red Why team is easy. that? Because blue team doesn't have engage. Trinomir, Trinomir's only engage is he, is he runs at you and he slows you down, but it's no hard CC. It's not big engage. Talon's only engage is just one shot you. Xerath has no engage. Jinx has no engage. Zyra has no engage. Uh, considering when I looked at the lobbies, for, or I've looked at the lobby for this game and looked at the players. We have people from all over the all over the ELO ladder. And again, I can't even tell if those ELO assessments were correct because for some reason Riot still thinks it's a good idea to put TFT ranks in some of the lobbies <laughs> for some reason. So I don't even know if any of it was real. But anyway, the uh, Riot, please fix that. I don't see people's Valorant ranks in lobbies, do I? No, I don't because that would be silly. So what I'm talking about here, now that I've got that vented a little bit, is the fact that in a composition or in a competition i should say where it's not strictly high elo engage i think almost always wins because it allows you to decide when you want to fight and it allows you to play the game of league of legends you're trying to play instead of the one they're forcing you into the fact that red team has fiddlesticks engage and they have thresh engage i think will be the difference maker unless somebody on blue team is just an entire head above their opponent mechanically in terms of just running them over in the lane yeah i think the more that we talk this out the more that i i would tend to lean on your your assessment i think that there's some really rough matchups going on uh for blue mm -hmm. they've got they've got the malzahar i guess which is 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 okay for Zareth, but everything else down the pipeline here i mean talon can never really kill fiddle easily because of the cc like you said there's no hard cc for the talon you've got the set in the trinomir matchup which Trinomir absolutely hates that matchup pre-6. It's not very good. And then down on bot lane, I mean, Thresh Vayne is pretty safe, so it's not like they're going to just get run over. The Thresh can always right. do lantern positioning and just pull off the Vayne. So it all looks pretty solid, I think, for red, but I'd love to be wrong. Okay, so as we load in, this is one of the things that you wouldn't always be able to rely on if you have, like, you know, if you're a professional commentator because you don't actually usually see the loading screen. It's just, you know show graphics and whatever transitioning over but we have the loading screen so we were able to check there and one of the things that i always like to do at the very start of the game is make sure that i'm looking at all 10 keystones and all 20 summoner spells and just make sure that there's nothing weird or out of the ordinary here like immediately my eyes are drawn to ignite set set all this like you know in in pro play and traditional play he's almost always taking teleport set never takes ignite so set having the ignite that's one that's immediately drawn to my attention Zerath running barrier in the mid lane without running a summoner spellbook attached to it again means that's going to be one less teleport here for this team uh, no teleports at all actually being ran on the blue team <laughs> side so in that means that what I said in the lobby is now even more true than it was about how if blue team wants to win this, it needs to be through like mechanical excellence. It needs to be through a lane dominant position somewhere. There are no teleports here, my friend. So if they fall behind. Yeah, it's, it's going to get like bad. The, it's not like they're going to be able to make map plays. Yeah, this is this is pretty this is pretty scary for for blue here. They they, they don't have the the luxury of just like Let's play out a long game. Let's see how this goes because the teleport right. advantages will start to wear them down. Also, Malzahar can just cover the Trinomir later in the game, which I think is interesting. You can have the Malzahar just park on towers if he ever needs to. And with the teleport, anytime Trinomir decides to flank, he can just follow the flank. And then right there, I mean, we're kind of seeing why teleport is so popular in high elo and in pro play. Right. It just enables so much to happen. Teleport gains value as the clock marches on, where usually something like Ignite is going to lose value as the game goes forward, despite the fact that obviously it's tooltip damage is going up. 
you're a coach, you understand that being a an Excel spreadsheet warrior is not actually often the best way to play video games. <laughs> so even though the tooltip damage is going up, it's not like the value of it is substantially increasing compared to something like teleport, which is always always going to be providing you greater and greater value as the game goes on so up here in the top side mysterium is dealing with trindamir at level one that level one trindamir is something that can always catch people off guard a little bit if they're not used to Ooh. playing against him very much and you can see chachi straighten into him but mysterimus is ready to go flash forward would have needed one more hit to do it miscalculates his own damage there in chachi 420 i love to see it he does not waste a summoner spell the man is cool yeah he keeps it he resets not even sure he actually needs to reset there. I'm pretty sure he could just park with the set and heal up. Set has no kill potential anymore. Trinomir is the god of sustain, so he could have just parked the tower and just waited it out. Got his Q level up and just healed up, but decides he wants to take a breather. And wow. Yep. Bottom side, nice hook coming out there as Thresh is able to get this one started up. Solar Ring Goku gets himself away, so does cost him his flash. Still has Ignite, or not Ignite, excuse me, his cleanse ready to go. Teammate still has Ignite. Back here in mid, these two getting into a bit of a scrap back and forth as... Did your thing freeze there for a second? Yeah, yeah, it's been okay. it's been like hitching a bit. Yeah, I'm getting the same what thing right now. What is your game clock currently? Game at? clock is 308, 309, 310. Oh, mine's a couple seconds behind yours. So okay, me... I can pause or... Uh, I just sped mine up. Uh, could you keep counting? Yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23... 24, 25, the Nisa. Okay, I'm about at the same spot. Okay. <laughs> I'm about at the same spot. I got it mostly caught. This is one of the problems is unfortunately the spectator client does still run off of the normal client. So it still <laughs> messes up and it will randomly just desync you no matter how synced up you are. So it is one of the things that we do have to contend with a little bit, but it's still the best option that we have on any given day. Yeah. So really even, uh, really even state of the game across the board right now, honestly, our biggest CS lead is up there in top where set got trained Trindamir sent back to base there for a wave. Chachi 420 going in. Mysterimus trying to deal with him here a little bit. Chachi's already ghosted. He's ready to go. He's got the full Fury Bar. Does he want to go in any further? Drops the Mocking Blow there. Needs a little bit more. He's not getting the crit. Ooh. He tries to flash away. He didn't get the crits. Chachi 420 barely staying alive. Yeah, and, and Mysterimus is able to stay in his minions. Got the level lead and hangs in there. And meanwhile, we've got a weird jungle dance, but... Nothing really yeah. comes of it, and Trinomir is going to get this push in. What a, what a tense fight. Trinomir is going to get the push. Trinomir is feeling good about this. He has that sustain that you were talking about here in the lane. That fight actually ends up going really well for him to equalize this lane state and feel like he's catching back up to set a little bit. The one spot on the map that felt like it was an advantage more so than anywhere else for one particular laner now gets equalized again. Yeah, and at bot lane, we've got this large wave crashing in but you know Zyra and Jinx they're thinking now nah, we're just gonna reset recall use this back timing and yeah we're just we're, it's a very slow start here no deaths even in a even yeah. in a low elo game I'm kind of surprised actually no deaths five minutes in for a just like an, an all elos type of custom is very surprising normally somebody's always gonna die at level three normally <laughs> you're gonna get some sort of pvp for the scuttle crab right like people are going to be a bit more audacious than how they're behaving right now but it seems like both teams are playing pretty respectfully of one another i expect that to change a little bit specifically when junglers hit six because both of these junglers get so much power, fiddlesticks especially, from those ultimates becoming unlocked, I think that's really going to be our window for things to open up. Yeah, and this matchup here, the Zareth versus the Malzahar. As Malzahar, you know, to sync up with what you're saying on the six, which Malzahar gets six as well, this lane gets a little bit easier for the Mals. He starts being able to have that fast shove and start avoiding this poke that he's been having to deal with the entire lane phase. And man, this this is a very tense lane. I, I think the spectate cam really wants us to check that out because <laughs> they keep bringing yeah. us up there. <laughs> they love <It's>, it. <laughs> that's one of the things about the observer cam because it values things differently. So whenever there's no direct player combat on the map, whenever there's not an objective being taken or whatever, it'll usually just go to wherever minions are being farmed because, hey, players are casting abilities over here. Go look, mm. there's shiny stuff. And it often results in you just watch a guy kill a minion for a couple of seconds. <laughs> it's just because the game can't recognize anything useful to show you, show it, so it shows you the least useless thing. Got it, got it. No, it's dope. I, I, I like this a lot. And Talon is uh, 
He's really hungry to find this Thresh pick, oh. and it's looking bad for Thresh here. Oh, Tree Jinx going in. He goes for the damage. Ignite dropped oh. down, and he's stunned up into the wall. Pink Unicorn needed one more to get it, but the Ignite gets it done. First blood over to Red Team. Yeah, and Talon thought he had it. He thought he had it made. He comes over the wall. Nice quick combo, but Thresh just ekes out a small victory there. Vayne doesn't even get the heal off. Was very confident that it was going to go their way. And meanwhile, up top, Trinomir versus Set. Set has to ult. Okay. And Trinomir trades it's ults. Yeah. Get the big haymaker. Trindamir forced to use his own ulti. Trindamir does not want to take this fight any further. And now for the next, what is that cooldown there, level one? 90 seconds, 110. Chachi's about to die. Mustarium has passed a minion. He punched a minion. His right hook hit a minion. That's crazy. If his right hook hit Trindamir, he gets the kill there. Oh, that's an unfortunate miss. Like, he's going to be feeling that one. He's going to be feeling that one. Maybe Fiddles can come in. Fiddles with the flash in the fear. There we go. Okay, his buddy comes in and helps him out. Hey, I'm actually going to say that Set calculated that because he wanted to get assist gold for Fiddlesticks. Yeah, sets up the dive. Maybe, you know, maybe he was thinking ahead. Maybe he wasn't. But pushing Trinomir out, getting him low under tower. Trinomir with no ult under tower is actually is one of the worst feelings in the game. I can speak from experience on that one. The dives <laughs> just kind of walk into tower. And you're like, wait, I, I actually can't play chicken with you like I like I want to. And, and in this case, Fiddle does make the good secure. Even with Trinomir having E up, is unable to avoid it. Yeah, no way out there. Feels really good for the side of the red team. Getting Fiddlesticks on the board. We know how much he can take over a game if he gets ahead. How powerful those ultis can become the mid game. So just me personally, by the way, the way that I usually define the stages of the game is early game is up until 14 minutes. And then once the plates fall and we start to see more rotations between the lanes is what I consider the mid game. And then usually once we hit about like that, uh, usually around that late 20s, like 30 minute mark is when I'll consider us in the late game there. Once your main carries are starting to hit their three item power spikes and stuff like that. That's generally what I'm going to be talking about when I use those phrases. And Fiddle finds a massive ult. Is your timer synced up with me? 851? Oh, I am at 8:35. Holy I have crap! Been getting, yeah, yeah, I think it's just I think it's because it's EU West and I'm in California, so I'm just getting massive amounts of lag. So what's, yeah, your, what's I, your timer? Think, what's your timer? Uh, my timer is 8:54, 55, 56. What is yours on? I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, mine's going to. I think mine's just going to continue. Just straight up chain inting for the EU West game. So we'll just try to do as best we'll we can. Make the, we'll, yeah, we'll make the best out of it until it goes back to NA and then the NA one should work a lot better for me. Cause yeah, I'm just uh, like literally every 10 seconds I'm lagging out for a second. It might so. be easier if he just watches your stream niece. Mm, maybe that works. If you someone try. could leave Nisa's stream. Yeah, so get out of Nisa's stream. What the hell's wrong with you? Okay, let's <laughs> see here. Um. Because uh, you can normally it. watch screen on on Discord. And the hitches will at least be kind of matched, I think. You can try that. Okay, so you're currently at 942, 3, Yeah, you're a few seconds. You're literally like five. a couple seconds off, not even. So it's, yeah, well, I mean, this is I'm, good. I'm reading your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem. That's what I'm saying. Okay. It's fine. That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. So... All right, we'll do, we'll try to get this working. Tech yeah. problem. This is also this is very important that we're doing this because this is actually a a teaching moment too. Is that literally every show you ever do in casting will have tech issues? Set going in for the outplay here on Malzahar, just beats the snot out of him. Nicely done. Masterum is getting his first kill here in the fight. Might turn it into a second. Chachi 420's got no way left out of this one as the Haymaker comes through. But he barely gets out on the edge. He will walk away with only a sliver of HP remaining. And that was the that was the directed camera. Looking at the Ignite, the directed camera says, no, this guy lives. Pulls the camera right away. Didn't even have to question it. We knew that Trinomir yep. had made it out. Just like you were talking about. It's so funny now because now I'm looking at it differently. Yeah. Because it's because remember, it's not reacting to it. It's just telling you what happened or it's not predicting it. It's reacting to it. Yeah, because it, it already saw it three minutes ago. Right. Or probably even longer for me because ours has been lagging. Today, so. Yeah, you predicted going into this game. Red team was going to be stomping right now. It's still neck and neck. Yeah, you still know, close. it's not still terrible. Close. It's not. It's not. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you're a fan of blue team, they're they're, you know, they're holding their ground so far. But these fiddle ults are about to start coming out, and it's gonna get very spoopy, very fast. 
That's where I was really worried about initially, is just the fact that once we get into the mid game, once we get into the 5v5 fights, I don't think that Blue is gonna have the answer for what Red brings to the table. Especially with Fiddle already having three, especially with him still not having broken stopwatch yet. That's going to allow him for big plays once he gets in the middle of this. And for champions like Fiddlesticks or like Morgana, one thing that I always look for is obviously the completion of the full zone is Hourglass. And then making sure you get a lot of value out of your early game stopwatch, right? That first stopwatch needs to be your big, like use it in combination with a flash in combination with an ulti don't waste it for no reason either get multiple kills or get an objective or something and that's kind of your transitionary item towards getting that zonias and being able to make repeat pieces so that stopwatch in particular my eyes are locked on that, my friend to see what sort of value fiddle can get yeah and he is posted up in bot lane he's chilling looking for the jinx pick and meanwhile in mid whoo malzahar does eat one Ooh. final Q and that's it. He's going, he's taking a great vacation. Yeah, the guy's not having a very fun time there against the ranged power that Zerath. And we're starting to see that range really come alive, man. Not only the solo kill there in mid lane, but about what is that 30 farm advantage. Now for Criminal Fush here in mid, Fiddle's ready to go for the flash ulti play, but a good escape coming out from Jinx. The cleanse to remove that CC and survive the gank. Nicely done. Yeah, there you, you know, you saw Jinx almost Almost posturing forward, trying to say, go ahead. You can try to ult me. You can try to do it. Fiddle takes the bait, and it actually goes in favor of blue side here. They make the skirmish favorable. They push off red. And now, this we're going to see even more kills coming out, potentially. But the Malzahar is forced to flash over the wall. Yep, Malzahar gets back over the wall. He'll stay safe through that. Chachi's got his ulti back up here in top side, but Set's just making it impossible. This feels a lot like what you were talking about with this matchup being miserable to play for Trendemir. Masterimus just has full control over the top lane. Yeah, over time, it might get a little bit easier if Trendemir is able to get that, that Kraken. If he's able to get the Kraken going, if he's able to get some items going, he might be able to do an extended all-in on set. But generally speaking, set with Tabby, set with Gore Drinker, he's going to be able to sustain through it and make it very, very tough for Trend to ever get anything going on the side lane. Just a brutal matchup. So, question for you then, uh, as a resident Trindamir guy. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, whenever Worlds is happening, because Worlds is on the same patch for... Oh, Fiddlesticks! Gets Ooh. hit by one, two, three, not the fourth! Only 75% accuracy wasn't enough, and Talon can't go underneath the turret! I said I needed the stopwatch to be huge, and huge yep. it was! Massive punish from the red team! Nicely played! Yeah, I mean, just a really disciplined stopwatch play. Gets all the way under the tower. He thinks he has him. Talon feels great about it and just absolutely gets turned on there at the tier two. So the question I have for you about Tridomir is mm -hmm. I don't keep up with patch notes on purpose during Worlds because otherwise all you're going to do is fill your brain with stuff that's not actually true to the patch that you're still casting. Got it. So with the Gore Drinker nerfs, that came in during worlds that are obviously not live during during worlds itself yeah. with that item getting hit do you feel that kraken is generally the better mythic item on trindamir now or is it still a gore drinker champion most of the time and you just like the kraken in the set matchup i think the gore drinker wound up being the better play for organized or high elo trindamir but mostly only for mid and okay. when you're talking about Trinomirs that have had the best results in like top lane, it seems to be Kraken Slayer still the GOAT. I, if I was playing mid though, I would go Gore Drinker every time. Just for the shove roam, that's mainly what okay. it is. Um, but even in Worlds, you can see that every, I kind of predicted this. I get to be a hindsight hero a bit. Okay. Um, but I predicted this a while back. I said that the Trinomir mid was not going to hold throughout Worlds. And you see like teams aren't playing it anymore. It's not very good into real laners and real teams, in my opinion. I think it was just getting, I think it was working because solo of solo queue. Hype. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Do. I think it was overhyped because of solo queue. Yeah. So also one other hint that I can give you that a lot of people don't know about League of Legends. So this only works for spectator. I'm sorry, you can't do this in your actual games. <laughs> if you hit control shift Z, just hit them all at once Got and it. then use your mouse wheel, you can scroll out further than you would normally be able to scroll oh out. Oh my God. Uh, by the way, there is no upper limit on this. You can scroll it out all the way until you break the skybox and the health bars are bigger than the actual map. 
you can entirely just completely screw with the thing. As soon as you want to reset it back to normal, just hit Control Shift Z again, and it will go back to the normal outer limit. Fiddlesticks coming in over the wall, looking for the gank immediately here on the Criminal Fush in mid, but he won't get Ooh. it. And Criminal Fush, a smooth criminal indeed. He outplays the die. Yeah, clutches up, survives the fiddle dive over the over the wall, over the chickens, falls back, gets the ult, gets the kill, and now Fiddle's gonna have to rethink that pathing. Very, very nicely done. Now, one thing I do want to bring up, and this is something that's always important to do when you're commentating a game as well, is remember that you're you need to always be checking how close is the actual game. And even though this one's seven to seven, I mean we've got a two Drake lead for the red side, but it's three and a half thousand gold at sixteen and a half minutes for the blue team. That is a massive lead in terms of gold advantage that these guys have. Malzahar going in after the Zerath now needs a little bit more damage. He'll find the Malefic Visions. That should do the trick. Nicely done. That shutdown is going to bring this game a little closer. Yeah, unfortunately for Zerath, he was not wearing his mask. Does get taken down in mid. And the yeah, man. you know... Yeah, he just, he yep. just, he just didn't, he didn't use sanitizer, you know? It's just what he, it is. He didn't, he didn't keep six feet away from Mal, dude. <laughs> Malzahar just got in range and there was no way to deal with it. Yeah, there it's was a shame. no way out. And Trindamir is now going after this Fiddlesticks, but he will not be able to actually secure a kill here. Set trying to go for the outplay in the 1v2. Takes Solar and Goku very low, but Solar and Goku's got health. And that means Mysterimus dropped for the second time this game. Nice punish there coming out from the blue team, swapping up these lanes a little bit. Trindamir doesn't want anything to do with this set anymore, it feels like. Yeah, smart move. Get away from this guy. Get get towards the Malzahar. At least first the Malzahar, you have a chance of a dive. It's kind of a funny interaction. If the Trindamir times the ult right, he could still actually pressure the Malzahar, especially running that ghost secondary. So yeah, it is a very, very smart move to avoid this set for the time being. So one thing that I generally like to do around this time, because we're, we're at a transitionary phase of the game, right? Like we're seeing a lot more rotations around. We're seeing a lot more crazy stuff happen. And hold on, Solar and Goku might just die here before he's able to do much else. Looks like he'll stay alive. He'll do all right for now. Chachi 420 Trinidad going after goes the out. Sticks, trying to get a return kill. Oh no, I don't think he's getting away from this one. He goes for the fear onto the trim. Zyra not gonna find the lockdown, but she don't need it. Malzahar back in the bottom lane. He'll be clearing out a turret here. So one of the things that we generally want to start talking about once we get into this phase of the game, it turned really violent there all of a sudden, but usually that doesn't happen. As Thresh might just die again here. I don't know if Zerath's going to be able to hit that Q. That, there we go. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this is where we sort of start talking about like what we want to see from the teams from here. So especially tying it back into the points that we made earlier at the end of champ select and the start of the game. So how the thing that I said was remember that we wanted to, we had to see blue team win through lanes. They had to win through individual matchups because red team has better team fighting. Well, hey, we're there. We're getting out of the lanes. Everything's sort of crumbling now with the tier one turrets. It's 19 minutes into the game. Blue team's got a 3000 gold lead. So let me ask you, what do you want to see this team continue to do now? How do you want to see them play League of Legends to continue utilizing this lead and not falling into the trap? of the red team's pick potential. You know, the best way, the best way that Blue wins this game and doesn't fall into this team comp death that we've been talking about has to be, it has to be split and avoid, split and avoid. You don't want to take a 5v5 here. Fiddle, you know, this, this red side, they're behind by quite a bit of gold, but if Fiddle finds a nice ult, gets people low, Vayne comes in for the cleanup. Like you said, going into this, not a ton of CC on Blue. They have some high damage for sure, but if Vayne could show up a little late to the fight, Vayne will be able to swing a lot of these fights if they get really bloody. So if I was blue here, I would actually stay away from the team fights altogether, work the okay. sides, get the objectives, and then slowly bleed out red. All right, avoid the 5v5s. Don't have anything to do with that. Now, one of the problems that blue could have in terms of accomplishing this is the fact that we do have an Ocean Soul here and we do have a red team that's already acquired the first two Drakes of the game for themselves. 10 seconds away from that third Drake, if the red team can acquire this one, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on Blue to have to eventually group up and answer that soul. Chachi420 is gonna spin into the pit and try to walk right out, but he's immediately gonna find some red team players ready and waiting for him. Zerath landing multiple shots here. Fiddlestick's already down. Nicely done from the blue side. Malzahar stands alone. There's no way he's getting away from that one, despite the fact 
that the blue team ends up face checking. They do it with the Trindamir. The red team's not ready, and blue slams them in the river. Yeah, this was a very, very unfortunate exchange. Sets off to the side lane, though. Is able to pick up a little bit of counter gold, but that really stinks for red. They really want to get this this soul point that's that's basically their win con right now is getting this soul point. Um, it's going to be a long time for them to, to pressure another one. And at this point, there has not been a, a reliable team fight coming out. Even with the face check there, Trinomir wasn't even forced to use his ult. You can see it's still up. And he's right back to the side lane pressure in the set. Yep. It feels like there's so much pressure on Fiddlesticks specifically this game. Seth just beating mm. us not out of Trendemir again. That fight wasn't even close. Set lost, what is that, 20% HP? And Chachi's nearly dead. So <laughs> there it is. not feeling super great about that one, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So Chachi getting shut down there. That's a nice big deal there for the red team, specifically because the money went on somebody that's not Fiddlesticks. The last fight, Fiddlesticks just got absolutely destroyed before he was able to do anything. The Xerath ult he's raining down, blowing him up. Fiddle has to have really good ults. He's got all the kills here on the red team. He's got to have a big weight in these team fights if red wants to win anything. The good news is here, Set is able to find this kill and is actually starting to reverse some of this pressure on the sides. And that's going to be really tough for Blue to deal with. They don't have anybody here. They have Tri Jing with the Talon. Talon doesn't stand a chance against the set, even if he runs the full no. rotation. Zeref's not going to be able to answer the push. And, and Trinomir's coming back down to bot lane. And the problem with Trinomir, you'll find, guys, is that once you don't have that ult and the guy figures it out, the push <laughs> figures it out, he could actually just return kill you. And meanwhile, in mid, Fiddle's oh, not messing about around. Return kills. Yeah. Nicely done. How do I, how do I say it? I'm going to. Few cloges. Few cloges. That's what we're gonna call them. Yeah, um, we, we. I mean, you're being you're being family friendly here. Yeah. But you don't have to be. It looks like a it looks like a big foop to me. But <laughs> well, down here at the bottom, Trejing's coming in trying to make that move. But uh, this is pretty much exactly what you were talking about, my friend. Where Talon doesn't win that fight, even if he lands the whole combo. There it is. Sterimus, the X factor for the red team. One v two man modes them. Yeah, right there. If, if you really want to take this set down, you're going to probably have to be... You don't have to bring three. Or just wait for the Trindamir ult to come up. Let the Trindamir just kind of lead the play. Then have the talent jump in after set uses the big abilities, after he uses the W. And now here we go. We've got Red Team felt inspired by that pick. They go straight to the Baron and they start chunking it down. I love this call from Red because they're expecting Blue Team to do the typical just solo queue fiesta play of, okay, well, our guys died bottom, send more guys bottom to kill the guy who <laughs> killed our guys, right? They're not expecting the actual, oh, well, we're down men across the map. We should probably play the objectives. And hey, it rewards them. They end up getting the Baron. Our game state now is 200 gold apart. This yep. Red Team was down almost 4,000 five minutes ago. Yeah, it just goes to show you the power for the split push. Anybody that's watching this, these split push guys playing these types of champions, notice how the set stays calm in the face of adversity here, rotates back to bot, gets the solo kill, starts pressuring the map actively, chains another couple kills together, and just like that, the pressure is alleviated, allowing Red to take this Baron. And even though Red, you know, they're still behind a little bit of gold, they have the Baron pressure, and that's going to be a lot to deal with, especially with the set which Blue has not proven that they could deal with. They have not demonstrated that they can handle this no. set split push yet. Not even a little bit. And it's only going to get scarier as Mysterimus now working towards that Titanic Hydra. He is maximizing his split push potential. He is recognizing this is the way the red team is winning the game. And he wants to continue applying that pressure for the rest of the game. Solar Ring, Goku, and Trijing both down there in the bottom side to answer. The rest of the red team knows Ooh. they have a man advantage here in the mid lane. They're not going to find Zyra. They're not going to find the Xerath. Trindamir looking to take down Vayne as some sort of a return play. He will be locked up for now. Fiddlesticks by in time there with a stopwatch. Oh. Trindamir won't get a single kill, but they do get one back with Thresh falling next. Blue team survives. It costs multiple summoner spells, but it ends up in an even trade. Crazy close pick in the mid lane. Oh. Vayne literally missed by an auto attack. And meanwhile, the fight's still continuing. Seth's even oh, thinking no, I want to go under tower here. This is where here. you want to be, buddy. Mysterimus ends up walking behind enemy lines, but he walks back there oh. and he gets two. He's about to get three. Mysterimus, right when wow. I was not a believer, the man just chads up.
Yeah, he must have ate a lot of a lot of egg whites before this game because he, he ate went... a good breakfast, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's a mighty hardy. Goes back in, gets a triple kill on the way down. Bit of a silly rotation, macro-wise. Not quite sure I agree with letting go of the Baron push, letting go of the free gold on that bottom tier two, that 500 <laughs> gold. But does make a nice, powerful trade back in, so it's not for nothing. And there's a soul point that we were talking about. Red team is oh surviving and thriving at this point. They are doing so well. Fiddlesticks also in that last fight, as he jumped in and engaged, it was both Zareth and Zyra that had to flash away just to live. They each survived with about 25% of their health remaining. And that means they don't have that flash for another three minutes or so now. And you can see over there for Fukloges, he's got himself his flash back up in about 20 seconds. This is a massive power window for the red team to just hard force a fight and destroy blue. Yeah, and we haven't really been talking about Solar and Goku too much in this game. Has managed to keep himself alive the entire game. Has got a nice Monopoly bounty at this point. Can can really can really pad the wallet if someone can pick him off. And could also no. lose the game at this point if he's managed to get picked off. But look at the look at the item. Look at the look at the sums here. He's got the cleanse and the QSS. He's saying, he's please don't kill me. I, I'm gonna try really hard to not die. And we're going to see if Fiddle and the team, can, is, if they're able to pull it off, if they're even able to pressure this guy, because he hasn't even been taken down as an immobile jinx. And oh! wow. Okay, well, Thresh just had a really bad time there trying to face check that brush. Fiddlesticks nearly getting shot to pieces. The Zap claims him, and Solar Ring Goku is unstoppable. This is really big. I really think they need to get another item completed on that Jinx. You know they would really love to have that Infinity Edge before the next big fight breaks out. Just because the itemization is so defensive, as you said. You know, he's got QSS, Immortal Shield Bow versus something like a Kraken Slayer. Mysterimus is trying to stand and fight these guys here yet again. Goes for the Haymaker, tries to get the stun. Will not kill the Trindomir. And now, just as the red team caught back up, the blue team's doing the same off a nice punish. They'll claim the tier two mid. Yeah, for a second there, I thought blue team was looking down and out here. The set pressure was becoming quite a bit too much, but a bad timed roam from Thresh going deep into the enemy jungle, trying to get some extra vision, gets caught out and then just unlocks up. It basically looks like it. It looks like a, a hornet's nest got shaken here. Blue just explodes out of the back half of the map, takes a bunch of kills and, and Trinomir is right back on the offensive again. Like he hasn't been being bullied for the past 10 minutes, goes right back to the tier two tower and starts pressuring right away. I feel like this game is a great example of why you don't forfeit unless the game is just obviously very done, right? Both of these teams have showcased both the ability to come back and the ability to throw rather extremely. Yeah. And I think that that's just a good lesson for general League of Legends gameplay is, yeah, if the score is 15 to 1 at 10 minutes, you can probably throw the FF up and you're going to be safe. But in any sort of a remotely close game, 5,000 gold does not mean the game is over in uh, most games of solo queue. You can always come back into something. And both teams seem to be playing around their big players at this point. The Jinx, like you already said, 5-0 and oh here, has that Infinity Edge done now, so the damage potential's finally up there where they want it to be. Over on the other side, you can see Mysterimus, very, very powerful, tanky here on the set, with the Zonia's Hourglass fully completed over for Fiddlesticks as well. He's gonna be huge and scary. Zareth also sitting on five kills with the completed Rabadon's Death Cap and Luden's Echo. There's so much damage potential in this game right now, man. Yeah, I, I really would love to see Red make a nice smooth team fight here. That's probably their best bet at this point. Get to the back line with the fiddle. Put a lot of pressure on the squishy back line. You've got the Zyra. You've got the Jinx, the Zareth, all these squishy champions. If Thresh gets picked again, though, that's going to result in a Baron. So smartly resets at this point. He knows that it, that was a that was a lot of wow. And before Whoa. I can even get the words out, Fiddle is looking for that backline pick, but doesn't get much done. Zeref doesn't even have to use a sub, no. and he just backs right off. Yeah, that didn't feel like a great Fiddlesticks ulti. Fortunately for him, he's at least got a little bit of ability haste there. Ten on the Zonias, fifteen on the on the Rocket Belt. So it'll clear off a little bit faster. It's a bit over a minute on that cooldown. But when you're playing up against Fiddlesticks, the difference between Ooh. Fiddles with ulti and without it is an entirely different champion. Sets going in already. Mysterimus, just the haymaker to rock the world right there. Trijing and Kanakatka are both out of the picture. Ooh, Vance As flashing Vince in. goes for the flash forward. He's going to be stunned up. He may just die, Ooh. but it'll be one for one with the AD carries. 
bottom side, Malzahar versus Trin. It's not favoring Malzahar for now, and he can't do anything about it. Chachi will get the kill there, but it's going to be Baron again for the red side. Yeah, that's that's got to hurt if you're blue. Jinx doing a phenomenal job all game long, but you can see that vein timers tick, tick, ticking away. The vein finally gets it a nice little opening to follow up like we talked about in the beginning the fight is a mess if the fight's a mess vein is going to get a ton of value and that's what you're looking for if you're on red right now you want to have a nice messy fight vein shows up late with the shield bow jinx it doesn't matter how many kills you got doesn't matter how much money you got on you she had to invest in the qss she can't go stopwatch here and because of that vein's able to just rock the jinx get a huge shutdown even though it's a trade and that gets the baron and we're right back to where we were dead even gold again this is definitely the kind of game you love to see in these community matches, man. I always love... Hey, whoever did the matchmaking here for this boot camp. Props. My hat's off to you. Props. You did a really solid one here. If solo queue match made like this, a lot less people would be bitching all the time. <laughs> this is this is good quality matchmaking right here because we've got 40 kills at 32 minutes and the game is on a knife's edge. This is beautiful. I'm loving what I'm watching. Yeah, this is this is exciting. This is exciting. We any anything could spell disaster here. Any any small misstep could totally end the game. We've got red with a baron. The red team is going to be incentivized to push up, but we've seen time and time again, every time that red tries to push in enemy territory, they get picked off, right? We go deep, we get picked off on the thresh. We yep. go deep, we get picked off on the fiddle. And here's the set back to works, getting three man. Is he going to be able to play it out? Okay, that was an immediate stasis from the Ooh. Zyra, but she's still going to die to it. Even if they kill him, he's already taken one with them. Nice multi-man face breaker coming out there as Solar Ring Goku barely lives through a fiddle ult back here in the mid lane. Luke Loges, he's going to get sniped down. Nice aim from Criminal Push. Yeah, definitely had the montage music going there from the jungle. Lands back to back to back R's. Meanwhile, top weird back timing from Malzahar. has got to say... Sees his team fighting down bottom, four members chasing the set down, decides to take the Baron empowered reset. It's not a really great timing, but it's still on the map and is about to run into a Talon problem. But if Talon doesn't have this QSS, I don't know if Talon yeah. really wants to take that 1v1 anytime soon. I'm a little worried for Malzahar here in this game. He had a bit of a rough laning phase. Zareth was able to out farm oh. him, use the power of the range there. Malzahar with some nice burst over the wall. There it he is. goes for Trejing. And he him. takes him down, right? As I said, I was worried. Malzahar makes it easy. Nicely done there. That's kind of what I was getting towards is I want to see him set himself up for success because he is behind the curve of the game. He's not super strong right now. And obviously, he's not able to deal with Trendemir. We saw that in the previous side lane. He's not able to deal with Zerath. So he needs to be in a place where he's setting himself up against someone else. And I mean, there he found Talon and that worked great. Yeah, the Talon a little out of line there. Going anywhere near the Malzahar at this stage of the game. Once we're deep, Malzahar has the damage to deal with just about any of these champions with a full rotation, except for the Trinomir. That is it. That's the only person that he cannot deal with. With the Trinomir, all he really has to do is just clear wave and fall backwards. Clear wave and fall backwards. And in this case, he does finally find that pick. And the Baron has the Baron has expired, and we're soon we're about to have another dragon, I believe, here in a second. I'm a little off timer here. Let me two bring minutes. that up. Yeah. Two minutes. Yep. It's, it's coming. Yep. Objective timer is one of the most useful things you can do in Spectator. Also, if you want to press the U hotkey, it will disable that timeline mm. thing above the scoreboard that you have, and then that won't spoil for people that are watching. Oh, I'm a dumbass. Now I know. No, it's, wow. it's all good. It's all good. It's I completely forgot to even mention it. That's literally the, the number one thing that I do whenever I start any game of spectator. I press OU because O brings the scoreboard up permanently and then U closes the timeline thing so it doesn't spoil. Wow. Wow. You are so. teaching you are legit teaching me some amazing stuff though today, man. This, <laughs> this is like basic, uh... this is like more than I ever thought. And Fiddle is gonna find two. <laughs> Fiddle did more than he ever thought as well. <laughs> He'll grab two kills immediately. Holy shit, they threw the whole kitchen sink at him. Three different mortars and a rocket, but luckily the stasis was ready to go. He had the cooldown. He times it properly. Nine and seven for Fook Loges, nine and five for Mysterimus. These two have 18 out of the 24 of their team's kills.
you know, we got to give a little credit. We got to give a little credit to the mid lane, to the ADC. They're keeping their deaths low. They're, they're not dead weight here. They're valuable. You saw the vein was getting that crucial jinx shut down. The mouse yep. is able to find a pick in the side lane, even after I flamed him for the weird back timing. Does find the side lane pick. So they're contributing a little bit. It's not just an, it's not just empty carries here. They're being helpful. And here comes Thresh. Right. He's, he's determined. He's like, I, I'm going to clear this, this friggin' ward one day. I'm going to get in there without dying. They finally get it down. So we've got 25 seconds until this Drake. Now, blue team is going to feel the pressure on this one. If they lose it, it's Ocean Soul for their opponents. Fook Loge is immediately going in. He goes after Solar and Goku, who gets away for now. Mysterimus wants to go forward, try to protect his jungler a little bit. He goes in for the face breaker, immediately ulting back onto the Trindamir. But Chachi 420 is not the guy to focus. Set's going to get bursted down here on the front line, isolated away from everybody else. 60 second death timer with the ocean drake alive trinomir still has ulti too malzahar gonna find a bolt go. face checking the brush here he's gonna be pulled to safety death sentence now back on achachi as he's gonna be controlled and shut down pink unicorn getting that one done one for one across the fight overall back in the drake pit the dragon's gonna go over to the red side they will not go in on the death sentence here after jinx solar and goku getting away blue team trades even in the fight but red gets what they came for Trindamir has the option. He has the option to go in. He has the option to go deep. Doesn't fully commit. You could see him get a little hesitant there. He had the ghost. He had the flash. He had the ult. He had everything he needed to get to the back line, to get back there so his team could walk forward. Chicken's out a little bit. And unfortunately for him, gets condemned against the wall. If you're in this spot, mm -hmm. guys, late in the game, you've got all your rotation, just go, right? You got to contest that soul. And, and you know, blue... They're going right for the Baron here. They're trying to get oh, some wow. answer. Yeah. They are burning this very quickly. Red's not ready to intercept this in time. The power of that nearly full build Jinx mows it over. Nice call from Blue there, making sure they're able to get something on the map to counteract this Ocean Soul. It is a very valuable pickup. It keeps the gold even. It makes this incoming siege a lot more difficult for red. They really want to get in here and pressure with this ocean soul. But they have some options. They could choose to just wait out the Baron and wait for Elder. Or they could get some deep vision down. Maybe find Fiddle. Fiddle has proven that he's pretty decisive on the ults. If he sees them, he goes for them. He's opened up a lot of objectives this game. And we're going to see how they play it. I, I, it. You know, I feel like if I'm red here, I just want to wait for the Elder. I mean, this game... There's a lot on the line. You got Captain Flowers casting you. You got to win. Yeah, we got it. Well, I need to see them, them fancy endings here. I need to see the big climactic finale that we spent the whole movie building up towards. <laughs> yeah, this is, one this thing is that massive. I also, one thing that I also want to see, my friend, that I am not seeing enough of here. Ocean Soul was just secured by the red team. And when I'm looking across blue team, there is one person with Grievous Wounds, and it's only the 40% one, and it's Zareth. Jinx does not have Grievous Wounds. Trinomir has no Grievous Wounds. Talon has no Grievous Wounds. Zyra, who can just apply it to everybody by pressing R, doesn't have Grievous Wounds. When you're up against Ocean Soul, I want to see at least two reliable sources of Grievous Wounds application on the enemy team. Otherwise, that Ocean Soul is going to give so much value, especially on a champion like Set, especially on a champion that's tanky enough to survive and allow that healing to come in. You need plenty of Grievous Wounds here, and I'm just a little bit concerned that Blue might not have enough of it. I don't think they had any at Costco, and I think that's why they were out of stock. <laughs> There's only that one stupid oblivion orb left on the back yeah. of the shelf. That thing's been sitting there for three months. The expiration date's like two months past it. Yeah. They stole yeah. it to you anyway. They gave you a dollar off and said, don't sue the store. Zyra was saying, you know, I, I don't want one that's so outdated. I, I need a fresh stock. And they, you know, it's going to bite them in the ass here. Late game. It's going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt a lot. You really do want one. It's a great point. I could picture LS just raging about itemization right now if he was watching this game. I could, I could feel it in my bones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've got, and it's not just Ocean Soul, right? We have Gore Drinker set. We have Fiddlesticks and yep. Double Lifesteal Ginsu's Vein. Like, yep. there's a lot of Grievous Wounds value here, and just an Oblivion Orb on Zareth is not enough for me. I feel like Blue Team's actually making a pretty big itemization error here by not stacking towards that further. Just getting it on somebody else, either either Zyra well, or Jinx. Trinomir does pick up the Executioners, but I don't know if he's ever going to be able to apply it. What's that? The Trindamir oh, has actually, yeah, yeah, he does pick it up. That's, that's one issue for me is the is ease of application, yep. right? 
Jinx or Zyra are who I'm looking at because they're pretty much, because Jinx has Runons, because Zyra is just literally, that's what her champion does. They're both going to apply it to everybody constantly in a team fight. So those are one of the two that I would really like to see that out of more. I understand that Jinx wants to maximize damage with things like Infinity Edge and LDR. I understand that she needs to have the safety of her Immortal Shield Bow and the Mercurial Scimitar, but it does make things a little bit difficult here as Malzahar... Ooh. Whoa, he just barely survived oh, that with no. a super mega death rocket pop. No. His dance and shoes weren't weren't tight enough, and he does get picked off anyways. And it's a oh. counter kill onto the Talon, too. So, you know, this game living up to the hype, going back and forth, back and forth. And Fiddle might even go down, forced to use the stopwatch. Thresh is like, please don't kill my Fiddle. Fiddlesticks also flashing a way to survive there. Pink Unicorn gonna keep pushing up as he sees Zareth coming in behind him. Loses Bloodthirster's shield. Now still staying pretty far up. He's gonna condemn Ooh, Zyra into the Vayne wall. Zyra, baby, it. what are you doing? You don't wanna walk up to Vayne next to the wall like that. That is not what we wanted to see. Directed camera's a little bit drunk. It's following Zyra for some reason instead of chasing the fight <laughs> underneath the turret. This is this is one reason why it's nice to use that zoom out thing I told you about. Oh, is because yeah, yeah. something happened to directed camera in season 11 where it just gets drunk sometimes and it doesn't properly do that. Well, what is the least useless thing on the screen? And you just get Zyra <laughs> taking a walk in a park. <laughs> She, she, it was a very important walk for her. She, she lives even though she did something. You know when you like, you know when you have a near death experience, like when you walk next you to a wall. You reflect on it a little bit. Yeah, she was reflecting like, mm, damn, I shouldn't have. <laughs> I walked near that wall. That damn Turns wall was, was that. I don't know what I was thinking. I could have died. That's what she was well, thinking. Zara, I'm, I'm glad we got to go on that learning experience with you. Yeah, that was that was deep. Good job, directed camera. Really ahead of its time, actually. Yeah, directed camera's making it work. Directed camera's got it going on. Banshee's Veil also picked up for the Zyra, which is very important item. So many champions in this game are starting to hit full build. Both of our top laners uh -oh, are full build. Oh, here now it we're is. Have a problem here. Solar Ring Goku getting jumped on by the Fiddlesticks yet again. Fiddlesticks just barely with enough damage to take him down. He had to use the cleanse. He had to use the Mercurial Scimitar. It still wasn't enough. Guardian Angel gonna get popped now as Bane comes back to life. Pink Unicorn getting himself back and away. Fiddlesticks and Thresh lost on the side of the red team, but Trindamir, Jinx, and Zyra all gone on the side of the blue. The important thing here, Trijing's still alive. So a Smite Steel is still in the cards. Malzahar's job is going to be to run interference on this one. Let Vayne do the DPS and the Drake. That's double life steal Vayne. Vayne can solo this. Vayne 100% can just solo this down. Malzahar's job has got to be running interference on Talon. Set's got to be keeping the other guy away. There you go. Malzahar's going to see him. Trish and there okay. he goes. Huge pickup. That's going to be Elder. Unless Malzahar gets a lucky steal. Goes for it. Ooh, almost Ooh, takes it. That was way it. too close. Oh, that was way too close, man. I thought for sure Zareth was going to be able to bop that there. But okay, 200 HP ends up being enough. And now they got Elder. Now they're going over to Baron. Honestly, just get this Baron back immediately and make your game ending push. Yeah, it's a very tough situation. I I, I have to applaud the Zareth for attempting it. He, yeah. he was right on time. I mean, you don't get a better attempt than that, really. And yeah. unfortunately, unfortunately, does not go his way. And that's going to be two big objectives. Now, I, I can't speak doom and gloom necessarily because we do have a lot of wave clear. But I don't know, man. This is a hard push to survive with this elder. And oh, Zareth yeah. does steal comes it. this guy, too. Oh, Fiddlesticks just found his way in the middle of everybody. Trindamir dropping into the ulti here as Zyra tries to get away. Fiddlesticks going to be the first one dead. Trindamir still escaping. Mysterimus goes in. Pink Unicorn with the domination through the Elder Dragon Obliteration. As Trindamir escapes back to the base, a Haymaker comes out once more. Minion Waves marching down mid, but paralyzed in the two side lanes. It's gonna be a mid lane push. It's gonna be some NA RAM, and it might just be the end of the game here with double super buffs on the red side. Zareth has to get out here and clear this wave right now. A little late to the party. Jace gets oh. picked off. Plenty of wave clear from the Zareth. If he can if he can hang in there with the Baron, the empowered minions, you'd be surprised. The Elder is very spoopy, obviously. But if Zareth's able to keep winding off this damage, he is one of the kings of delaying Wait, the game. The blue team stole the Baron. I yeah, didn't even Zareth, notice that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zareth stole. I couldn't I believe it. I was trolling so hard. I was trying to keep track of the fight and everything like that. Jesus, I griefed it. I griefed it. But yeah, that is huge. Huge. Yeah, he's able, able to, to hold get that it. Baron, that's literally the difference between winning and losing right now. Zareth is just trying to play out of his mind.
mine to keep this game alive. Oh no, Thresh. Oh, I'll see you later, buddy. I don't think they're going to go back in trying to look for Trindamir anymore. Or are they? Mysterimus coming around the side looking for that big haymaker. Oh, gets the Holy shutdown. Shit. Double haymaker execution as he removes Criminal Fush and Tree Jing from the equation. That is not what you want to see. This could be the game. Zareph is the entire wave clear here. Zyra can can maybe show up, but you're facing an Elder Push. It's going to be really scary. Zyra does not have ult. I, I think this could be could be a game ending push if red commits but they decide no fiddle's just not in position yet so yeah no. we're just gonna have to live to fight another day here and this game continues the back and forth i think set literally one shot zara i'm yeah. pretty sure he just tanked up the entire grit bar yep. he hit him with the true damage of haymaker which took him down below 20 percent and elder killed him that was yep. <laughs> he actually just unironically one shot him yeah it was a it was definitely a tough spot for Zareth. You, you got to watch out in these situations, these late game situations, guys. You 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 got to figure out what is the thing that keeps you afloat in the game. Thankfully, Zareth doesn't lose the game off of getting picked here. Set, you know, he 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 bought a lot of really beefy items, but just because he bought beefy items, you know, he's he's uh he's a very interesting champion. He can do that, and he can still pressure a one shot. And Trinomir is hungry, hungry, but I think that was a. Yeah. Tooltip damage on this thing is maximum 1,819. Yikes. So, and remember, that's true damage if it hits in the middle. Zara's health is 2340. So, I'm going to put this, hold on, 1,819 divided by 2340. It's 78%, and Elder Dragon executes you under, uh, under 25. I thought you so said you weren't academic. It's 3% over enough. <laughs> Did you just academic the shit out of that? It's it's a one shot. I said I, but I did say I crunch numbers for games that I like. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, the asterisk, that's the important part. Ooh, Trindamir is actually, he's he's got the big heart here going in for the 1v4 Trindamir style. This could actually work. This or maybe not. what they need to have happen. Oh no, Zyra's already down. Mysterimus tries to go in. He gets the Haymaker for a little bit of damage there. Not all the way charged up like the last time. Red team, 5v4 here on the map. No Zyra for 50 seconds. Malzahar trying to continue to apply that pressure to anybody he can find. Oh my goodness, the man's got fancy feet. Getting away from some of those rockets as long as he can. Does get pulled back to safety. Bottom lane turret under pressure. Trindamir still with no ulti for the next, what's that timer? About 30 seconds. This is tough here for the blue side. It's so difficult to fight. You might as well be at a three and a half v5 with no Trin ulti. Yes, yeah, oh, so man, true. these guys are stuck. Yeah, it's so true. The Trindamir not having the ult. The Fiddle is hungry to end the game, and he finds a decent ult. Unfortunately for him, it ends up aiming only towards Trindamir, so he doesn't get the Jinx. So Solar and Goku can get one back on him. Pink Unicorn wants to go in, looking for that Jinx a little bit further now, but the range on the Rockets really proven to be her greatest ally right about now. Still only a two inhib game. That top lane tier three hasn't been broken yet, and it feels like Red Team's a little bit stonewalled here. Yeah, it's a really weird situation. The game's going super deep. It's one of those situations that as a league player, you're not too familiar with a lot of the time. The game drags yeah. on to 50 minutes. You have no idea what your damage is, what their damage is. It's very confusing. And unfortunately, that confusion means one small misstep means about, I think it's like an 80 second respawn timer. You could be- it's so long. You could be losing the entire game if you get hit by a couple of misfortuned autos, a couple of uh, a couple of Zerif abilities. You, you could be sent right back to a Greycation, a very long Greycation. And all of the big players are full build now, right? Trinomir yep. is full build. Set is full build. Zerith is full build. Malzahar Ooh. even, who's been behind the game for most of it, is nearly full build. A nice catch under the Talon will be the first kill of the fight here. Trijing falls. Mysterium is still hanging around, looking to find even a little bit more. Goes for the Haymaker, but Solar Ring Goku still with his HP remaining thanks to the power of that Immortal Shield Bow. Solar Ring Goku going to get hit by Death Sentence. Solar and Goku down for 70 seconds. Kanakotka's down for 70 seconds. The Elder Drake is live. The Baron is live in 15. The red team can do whatever they want. Yeah, right now, Red has to figure out what's the best move. Are you going to try to push into the Zareth? If Zareth is able to base... It's over. Oh, what it's just FF. happened? Blue team it's FF. Surrender. Who surrenders the Captain Flowers game? What? I am surprised we got the FF. I thought... 
Honestly, don't FF those. Don't FF those. They don't know what the call they're going to do yet is. They don't know if they're going to go for Elder. They don't know if they're going to go for Baron. Some of them are still looking for kills. Some of them are going towards the base. There's a chance you hold there. Yeah, there I would I would have loved to there. see. I would have loved to see a Zerif try to wave clear it out. I I really do believe that there's a chance that Zareth is able to wave clear that one out. He he's got a full build there on the Zareth. He probably can afford a blue pot. I, and Talon's up in 27. You just got to play you just got to play tower defense for 27 seconds and then red team's going to get very spooked. They don't want to throw a 50 50 minute game. Holy shit, you you had your birthday during this game. Man. I am wow. bummed that we only got an FF for that. I wanted to see our climactic final battle. I mean, I'm just so... That's so EU West, you know? <laughs> that's so EU West. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I know all about this. Fuck this FF. <laughs> I know this game's over, boys. I'm in these 50-minute games constantly. This is an FF here. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, it was so tense, dude. It was so good. Yeah. I was actually really liking that. Again, huge shout out to whoever did the matchmaking for that. That was a good game. Yeah, that was great. So, now, at the end of the game, mm -hmm. now that we've done this, you can flame me to your heart's content and my casting abilities. No, I think you did just fine. The big thing is just making sure that you were constantly, like, going back sort of establishing like more bigger picture stuff mm -hmm. is not just commenting like you know what's already happening but sort of setting the table for what's going to be happening what we expect to be happening talking about you know what kind of objectives you want to see them playing around early game talking about where you would want to see junglers focus things like that a little bit more preemptive a little bit more predictive and then that also works well because it sets yourself up in the, it sets future you up for an alley-oop. Because just in the same way that we were talking about in the lobby, how if blue team wanted to make this a close game, they would need to have individual leads in the lanes through their laning prowess and their mechanics. And then we called back to that at 15 minutes after the, after the laning phase ended and we're looking at a 3K gold lead for blue. Setting up those predictions, setting up those expectations and sort of just like what you want to see allows us to hearken back to it later, whether it happens or not. Because let's say that blue team didn't have a good laning phase. Let's say the blue team's laning phase was bad and they all lost their lanes. 15 minutes, we get out of the, the laning phase and red team's up 3000 gold. We can say, yeah, and this is looking really dire for the blue team here. We needed to see these guys get ahead in lane. That didn't happen. And so now red team with a superior team fight composition is just going to feel like they can death ball the rest of the game. There's always something that you can make out of a conversation that you had earlier, as long as that conversation was built properly from the ground up to talk about things in the future of the game. Yeah, I, my, my goal in this cast was to kind of let you set up the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> set up the meatballs. Yeah, you know, set them up set them up and i just all i have to do is just do analysis after you set the stage it's very easy for me to just come in and be like oh yeah good job good job casting and doing the real work good job uh <laughs> fucking rap god in your way through this fight i don't have to do all that and i just have to you see what i'm saying i just have to do yeah. the analytical stuff right that makes yeah. sense kind of in theory no, that works no that works that works that works and the analytical stuff is gonna flow so naturally into like the preemptive and the setup type of stuff after a while, like it just becomes one and the same. So what we're gonna do is for the NA one, after I, here, let me sign out and go back to my NA account. Yeah, the yeah. next one's happening on NA, right? Like, yes, I'm, I'm yes. Okay to switch back, okay. Yeah. Uh, so for the NA one, we're going to do the lobby as if this was, we're gonna actually do like a real champ select draft as if this was like, you know, an LCS game, but it's obviously not LCS, right? So we're gonna see how well we can carry a champ select conversation. Oh God. You're putting Real me on, can I, style. I'm gonna get a glass of water. Hold on. That's good, that's good, get water. That's one of the I important steps. I said that step earlier. I need it because step it's earlier. too much pressure. <laughs>